Good morning, folks. This is what the eclipse looked like from the Proba 2 swap satellite. It caught the eclipse twice, actually. We can thank the European Space Agency for these images. Hope our Euro viewers got a chance to watch. We're coming to the northeastern limb where a beautiful plasma filament is learning how to dougie as he dances over. This is indeed just one plasma filament that makes up the filament field on the Earth-facing side of the Sun. Each of the thin, darker ropes are eruption threats while in Earth-facing position. Threats are all there is, though. It was a calm day on our star. Coronagraph shows only yesterday morning's CME from the departing sunspot C7 flare, nothing more. And since that C7 yesterday, there has been almost no C flares even, a definitive downtick in activity from last week. That one sunspot up north is still lonely and boring, but right where we aimed focus yesterday, we now see a complex grouping today, at least two large umbras in close proximity. Back at Earth. Spaceweather.com confirms yesterday's analysis of ongoing geomagnetic unrest, reverberations, and the speedy coronal hole solar wind stream. You can see another element to that stream hitting this morning, little speed ramp. The shield is still reeling from last week and any solar wind flux could result in more instability. Another stream is set this way by that central coronal hole today. Potential Earth spot quake here with Cyclone Nathan just to the south of it. 5.5 at USGS, but that's the lowest of all the readings that came in. Literally, to go any lower, they'd have to invent quake readings. Also had one in Mexico, and by the way, the springtime begins earthquake season in the Americas, especially when the tropical storms show up. Two nuclear incidents here on RSOE. One is a tritium leak. The other is a shutdown due to system problems. Both plants allege there is no public danger. If you missed this release from a couple days ago, here's another chance to check it out. I think the article could make for some good discussion in today's comment section. So much going on, sometimes it's hard to keep track. Tickets for Observing the Frontier became available yesterday morning. Great day, guys. Website members, you'll want to check out yesterday's Deeper Look episode for the second electric event of 2015, and it is Saturday, so we'll be doing our Fly on the Wall podcast in a few hours. If you're not yet a member of SuspiciousObservers.org, it is only $3 a month or $20 for a whole year. That keeps the channel and all the research lines moving forward. You're very appreciated. On to the weather. In addition to Nathan lashing the north, we've now got more cyclone potential to the east. We'll be monitoring those along with that convergence that has now indeed made it to New Zealand. I'll take weather shares from anyone here. In the west, the story is still that southern convergence, probably going to get a bit rough. Also got the Pacific flow delivering a bit of rain out west. And then there is this odd convergence from Arctic air trying to come back for round two of winter. He won't make his push much further, but it does create a barrier where the southern storms will shoot right up along the eastern side into New England. In Europe, we've got a far northern low whose convergence comes right down and joins a weak low circulation whose convergence comes down to one that is still holding near Spain. Convergence at Iceland as well from the next system that'll come through. Watch how the cloud lines on land join up and connect those lows. We've got your current conditions and some shots of our star to close. Eyes open. No fear. It's 5.55 a.m. Eastern Time and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.